This is an old hunting knife, fixed blade. It's got a stag antler handle. It's a little bit beat up, pretty rough, but the blade's still in good shape. It's got a little nick on the top there. It's by the Camillus Cutlery Company out of New York. It's probably late 1800s is my guess. And I put this up for 25 bucks, fixed price, and somebody bought it pretty much right away. I got this at the bottom of a box of old tools and pliers at a yard sale, and I think I paid a quarter for it. This is a wooden advertising ruler from a Connecticut millwork company, probably from the late 1800s, early 1900s. Got this in a box lot at an auction of a bunch of old office and desk kind of supplies. thought it was kind of interesting, but nothing special. But then I realized I had this kind of cool pencil sharpener designs, these two metal files that come together and you're supposed to drag a pencil in there. There's directions right there how to do it. So I put it up for $50, our best offer, and someone came in and bought it full price, $50. This is a Boeing 787 Dreamliner team member hat. Saw it at a thrift store, thought it was interesting. Put it up online, accepted the best offer of, I think it was $24. And it's been up for a little while, so I'm glad to get rid of it. This is an antique book from 1896. And whenever I come across them at auctions, I like to buy books, especially if they're kind of obscure and old. Mid 1800s, late 1800s are really good time periods. And they don't sell really, really fast, but they're kind of good pipeline items. I just throw them up, put a price on them, best offer, and just see what happens. And some of them sell quickly some of them take a little while this one here I think I had up for $40 and accepted the best offer of 24 for it this is a one quart primitive New England redware clay preserve pot or crock it's really cool it's probably from early to mid 1800s is my guess it's uh, unglazed on the outside there's nothing on the bottom doesn't have a lid. The inside is probably lead or magnesium glazing. It's kind of a dark black color. It's not intact. You wouldn't actually want to use this to preserve anything in. Um, this, wouldn't, this usually wouldn't have a lid. Instead, they would probably seal it with wax on the top. Really cool piece. This I had up for, I think originally I put it up for about 200 bucks, and then I kind of lowered it down to around 115 Someone came in and made a best offer of $75 for it, and I was happy to uh, pass it on to them. Gonna be really careful with packing this because you know, these are very fragile. And I want to make sure it gets to the person. This is a dual cassette tape deck, Technics brand. Don't know too much about it. Bought it at an auction with a bunch of other stereo equipment. They basically had somebody's component stereo. And what I really wanted was the speakers. They had a couple of really nice vintage Bose speakers, which I put up on eBay and sold pretty quickly. This here, not terribly thrilled about it, but I put it up online for $60 and sold in about three weeks. And it's just basically icing on the cake. And I hope when the person gets it that it works. I did test it and it seemed to. Here's a book that's sold, not terribly exciting. This is a uh, ham radio handbook. It's from 1989, so it's pretty old, but I don't think they, I don't know if they make this anymore, but I know people are kind of looking for this book. Got $14 for it, so not a bunch, but that's kind of, kind of what they go for. But I bought this, it came on a table of a bunch of ham radio equipment that I bought. I don't, I'm not an expert in ham radio stuff by any means, but I do know that people are always looking for that stuff. It's not often made nowadays, so when I find it, I usually buy it and research it and throw it up on eBay and sell it. But this book was kind of part of that lot. It's huge. They paid $14 plus shipping and uh, just glad to get it out of here. This is another ham radio piece. It's a uh, tuner, antenna tuner by AEA or Advanced Electronics Applications. This also came in that table lot of ham radio stuff. I put it up for $180, which was kind of a high price for it. I think they usually go for around $100, but I figured I'll just see what kind of offers came in for it. There's not a lot of these out there. 
And I got some lowball offers, which I didn't take. I finally accepted an offer yesterday of $115, and it's sold. This is a cordless phone answering system. It's got two cordless phones and then like a little headset kind of thing. I believe it also interfaces with your cell phone, so you can kind of link it and make phone calls through your cell phone. I thought it was kind of interesting. I think I picked this up at a yard sale for a few bucks. It's basically new in the box. I think it's got some, one of the phones has a couple scratches on it, maybe from storage, but everything inside was complete. The batteries were still wrapped up. Uh, the box is a little beat up. <clears throat> but anyways, put this up online for 55 bucks, and after a couple months, it sold. This is a pressed glass, kind of handmade sun catcher. This one's of a cardinal. It's in two different colors of glass, orange and red. It's kind of nice. I like these. I bought them at an auction. I got 50 of these, all of different designs. I paid $50 for the whole lot. It's kind of a pipeline item, so I just listed them all up, put a price of $13 on most of them. Some of them were a little more intricate. I put a higher price on those. And they've been selling pretty regularly. So I've got about, I think I sold about 25 of them so far. Probably average price of about $14. This one here I sold for $13. So a few months ago, the local auction place near my house had liquidated a retail camera shop. And I almost didn't go to this auction thinking, you know, there wouldn't be anything there that I'd be really interested in. But a friend of mine talked me into going, so I went and... This auction was just crazy. They were giving away stuff practically. It was auction fatigue set in really quickly. They had so much stuff to get through that they're just giving away tables and tables of stuff for pennies on the dollar. It was just kind of ridiculous. I wish I spent more actually. But I ended up buying a couple tables worth of can and stuff, mostly new in the box, things like this, lens hoods, um, grips, batteries, printer cartridges, paper. And I've been selling this stuff <clears throat> basically since January. and. Uh, I made my money back, you know, 10, 15 times, 20 times on this stuff. So this is just, you know, some of the stuff that's left over. I still got a bunch of lens hoods. I put my prices up a little bit higher than what was average on eBay. These were all genuine Canon, so I knew I'd be able to get the price eventually. And some of the camera stuff took a little while to sell, but the price I was asking for, but it's all slowly been selling. Some of it quickly sold. And um, I'm just kind of getting down to the end of it now, which is it was a great, great auction and just goes to show sometimes you don't know really what your market is until you kind of get out there and do it. This is an old-fashioned straight razor. I know a lot of people collect these online, so when I see them, I usually pick them up. I forget where I got this one, maybe at a yard sale or flea market. I don't think I paid much for it. It's a little bit rougher shape than I saw when I bought it. It has a chip up here, and um, I think the blade's in good shape. It's from the Tory Razor Company of Worcester, Mass., so it's local to me. <clears throat> Anyways, I had this up for a while, not much interest in it, and finally it's sold for $17. So I'm just glad to clear it out of inventory. So a couple pieces of jewelry sold. <clears throat> First piece here, this is a 14 karat white gold bracelet. It's marked as made in Italy. This I've had up for a little while. I've had a price of three, I think it was three forty-nine. I've been getting a lot of offers of about two hundred bucks for this, and I've been kicking back two seventy-five, and nobody's taking me up on it. Finally, had a couple offers come in overnight. I kicked back to each of them two hundred and fifty, and it finally sold. So I'm happy to get rid of it. It's a good price. Another piece is this cultured pearl stranded necklace. I think it's uh, 19 inches. It's got a 14 karat filigree clasp. I have it in the bag, so I'm not going to take this out. This I had it for about 120 and I took an offer of 85 on it, so not too bad. Both these pieces came out of a lot of estate jewelry that I bought. Um, I paid $50 for a large box of kind of unsorted jewelry. I like doing that because oftentimes you can find some really good pieces in there. I've never bought jewelry and not made some money on it. So these were some of the couple of the best pieces I got out of that lot. But I have a bunch of others that are up right now and hoping those will sell too. This is a miniature brass Chinese broad lock. Got this in the bottom of a box lot. I had no idea what it was at first because I had just found this. And I thought, hmm, 
have no clue. And then later I discovered the key in the bottom of the box as well and kind of put them together. And it's kind of cool. It's just the key goes in, I think, like this, and it clips it open. And, uh, and I thought someone would find it interesting, so I put it up for 20 bucks. I've had it in the store for probably about three months or so, and uh, finally sold for $20. This is an old children's book, Tom Swift and his Air Scout. This is from 1919. It's been drawn on. It's got the owner's label on the inside. I bought a bunch of these at auction. I forget what I paid for them. No more than 50 bucks. I got a, you know, a couple boxes, maybe three boxes of old books. And it's just, you know, easy enough to photograph them, describe them, and put them online. And they're kind of slow and steady. This one here sold for... $16. This is a tiny little wings pin. Let's see if the camera will focus on it. There you go. I think it's um, Ford Air Control Pilot FAC. Not entirely sure. That's what I put it up as. Vietnam era. No one sent me messages to correct me. It's kind of an old style fastener on the back. I mean, it could be older. I don't know. Anyways, put this up for $12, and it sold pretty quickly. I saw other ones selling for around $9. I put mine up a few bucks more. Anyways, not a big seller, but, you know, it was in the bottom of a box of stuff, and I don't like to throw anything away. This is another one of those pressed glass sun catchers for hanging up in the window. This one here is quite large. It was the largest one in that lot of 50 pieces that I bought at auction. And this one features kind of a medieval style lion and a star. It was really neat in stars, actually. Really neat pattern. I thought it was pretty cool. It was much heavier. This one weighs about three pounds and is about seven inches across. This one here I put up for, I think, $59.00. And got a few offers kind of low on it. I thought maybe the price was too high. If someone came in yesterday and gave me an offer of 35 and I was glad to let it go. This is a Wedgwood plate, collectible. It's from, I think, 1952. It's got a scene, a New England scene of tobacco growing or farming. Tobacco growing. And it's by Claire Layton. I've seen sets of these go for a good amount of money. I've seen single ones go for $20, but I've seen them go for higher. So I put this one up for $120 or $119. And it's just kind of sad, got no watchers. And finally someone came in yesterday and bought it for full price. I forget if I had best offer on it, I probably did, but they just paid the full price. And so it's going up today.